So then I had always had the notion that when people, especially with corner ghettos, and there was a kind of density of like street legal, this is Wonderland, and then corner gas, that suddenly I was out of that. I was at least <laughs> slightly out of the fact that they, people come up, because this happened to me, you're R.H. Thompson. I was told that once, <laughs> you're R.H. Thompson. Yeah. You know, where they know you. They, you're somebody. You know, aren't you Clifford Olson, the mass murderer? I, 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 why have I seen your face? Wait, I got one better than that. I got, are you, uh, you, didn't you used to be an actor? <laughs> I got better one. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, go on. So, and with Corner Gas, because it was this wonderful show that, like, Canadians watched in vast numbers, you know, by our standings, across the country with their families. And so it was like my whole theory come to, come to light by this kind of, and I knew that, and it was the only, you know, I knew Oscar, that character, because he was part of my palette, but I also lived out there and I knew this guy inside out. It was my dad, right? And it became everybody's dad. My dad's just like yours. My uncle's just like yours. And I'd go, yeah, my dad's dad. And, but again, my dad isn't like that. My dad, when he got, because he's a character. This is a character. Nobody's like that. It's, you know, my dad would get, because I think of my dad going, that's just stupid. You know, which my dad would do. So I, you take that little nugget of things you know. It's like in you. And that kid expanded in his character. And it was also written by all those wonderful writers. Brent Bach. I didn't. But back to asking Canadians okay. with a camera. So this was, okay, all right, sorry, that's good. I forgot what I was talking about there. <laughs> so when the show became successful, I thought it was a wonderful opportunity to also, as an educational, political, cultural, educational moment, <laughs> when people would come up and say how much they liked it, to explain to them why they liked it so much, because it was theirs. And I did sense this ownership that they had. And I said, well, yeah, you like the show, it's a good show, but it's ours too. That's the real buzz that you're getting out of it, that you don't get from watching Seinfeld, for example. You may love it, you'll have great laughs with it. It's the same model in a sense, there's a kind of form uh, thing. But this is like, and they go, it's so Canadian. And you go, well, it is kind of, well, we don't know it's so Canadian. I mean, you never, I mean, we're not trying to describe, anyways. anyways. So I thought, I wanted to thank every Canadian who ever liked the show personally. That's what I wanted to do. So anytime anybody came up to me, I would say, thank you for watching the show, because that's what I felt, so that's how so the This is Janet Wright saying, you chasing the bus. Yeah, this is Janet Wright saying, yeah. because anytime people wanted to come and see us, Janet's kind of shy about that stuff. She didn't like it. She didn't like being pressed up and pushed like it. I, on the other hand, I would, you know, get out of bed and go, yeah, yeah, you want to talk about the show, your family likes it? I would do, I just adored, and I wanted to be, available to people to say that. And then I could turn it to my propaganda, you know, I could educate them politically. So you, you thought with this camera, with this crew before, you so this was propaganda. So I mentioned this to these guys. So this is how we got the idea that I said, and I had these bitter thoughts about, you know, we can't look up and see the image of a... So we thought, well, we'll have me going in different places in Toronto going, excuse me, do you know who I am? And, man, it was hilarious. I mean, it was such a day. It was two days to shoot this. Uh, what did you get? What kind of responses? Well, lots of times people, it depended where I was. For example, down in, um, in, the, um, in the St. Lawrence Market on Saturday morning. <laughs> and it starts off in my Cohen's headquarters, my little office behind my house, right? With me doing, polishing all my awards <laughs> and ranting about, you know, about like a street legal, just starting off with a guy, you know, stops me and goes, hey, come here, come here, you know, and to his friend, you know who this is? And the guy goes, no. <laughs> no. And that whole idea, you know, where you're supposed to be, you feel it's your fault, you're not famous enough somehow. Otherwise, they'd know who you were, and it's totally your fault. So, anyways, so in, there were a lot of corner gas people, but there was also people that didn't, like there's a wonderful young woman who is in the film, who is working behind one of those meat counters, and I go, do you know who I am? She goes, yes, you're Brad Pitt. Like she, she could have, we, we could have written this. You know, so it, like it's come out just like that. She says, my dad fucking loves you. She gets on her phone, I'm going to call. So, you know, and so she calls, so we go off and come back. She says, yeah, my dad came back. He said, 
Tell him I fucking love that guy. So I'm saying, this is in the film, Craig. But can you text your dad and tell him I fucking love him too? And if people knew who I was, I said, I'm just trying to say, I just want to say thank you. I'm sorry, did you enlighten her that, in fact, yeah, you weren't talking to Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I let her pretend that I was. No, she, but she was willing to send it. And it, oh, I couldn't believe it. I was gobstruck by the fact that she just said this out of the blue, right? As a way of sending me up, she hadn't a clue who I was. Oh, okay. okay. But then I go, okay. and then, so, then I said, because I got a camera, so people are doing this. So, and then, um, like <laughs> the art gallery, for example, of Jerry, people are looking at things like sort of like, Excuse me, sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> Some people go, no. <laughs> I go, well, I'm an actor in this country, and they're doing. A, I'm getting cover country a lot, but so I'm just going around thanking anybody who sees Canadian art or has anything to do with Canadian art, just thanking you because it's incredibly important. That was my thesis. Then what did they say if, you, if they didn't know who you are and you said it? Well, it's again, if you come up to people with a friendly enough and sh shake hands with them, they just go, hi. But and if you say, oh, I'm an actor in the country and I'm getting governor's general's award, so I'm just going around, they go, well, I don't know who you are. You're no, they just listen to it and then they go, oh, okay, it's fine. Good, good, good for you. Yeah, yeah. And one of them was, I'm walking down the street and this, this, um, this teenager, you know, big teenager coming towards me and I go and they're set we're like we're just doing shots right so they're across the street and I've been sort of waving at cars <laughs> going hello thank you thank you right like this people wave back <laughs> they haven't a clue right so, because we constructed this so this kid's coming towards me and I go excuse me it's a long shot so I and I'm wired but it look I think this will look good you know, this kid's not going to know who I am. Christ almighty. He said, I go, excuse me, do you know who I am? He looks at me and goes, yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm a lunatic. You mean you don't know who you are? He said, yeah. You're that guy on television. <laughs> well, I said, yeah, I'm Eric Peterson. I said, thank you for the text. 